A few weeks ago, we made a trip to Palatka, Florida again. And one of the most interesting things about Palatka, Florida to me is that it's the place where Billy Graham was baptized and where he preached his first sermon. Well, it just happened that very briefly after that, Elena and I were already scheduled to make a trip back home to Greenville, South Carolina. And something that's been on my bucket list for a long time is to visit the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is only a couple of hours away. On the grounds of the Billy Graham Library is, of course, the main library building itself. It's shaped like a giant barn with a big cross in the front of it. In this building, you'll be invited to take a journey of faith through the life and message of Reverend Grant. There's also Billy's childhood home, which was relocated there from the mountains of North Carolina. And finally, there were also the graves of both Billy Graham, Ruth Graham, and some other prominent members of the Graham Evangelistic Team. Upon entering the Billy Graham Library, we were welcomed by a grand lobby area, which was surrounded by a few exhibits, but also contained the gift shop and a canteen area. It's from this location that you have the opportunity to begin the multimedia tour called The Journey of Faith. In a world of conflicting beliefs, a man was called by God to deliver a message that would change the hearts of many. Vivian and Pierce most enjoyed the talking cow animatronic. Oh, you're lovely. Oh, okay. Didn't see you coming. My name is Bessie. I love that song because it comes right out of the book of Psalms, where God said, Every animal of the forest is mine, and the cow is mine. This very congenial cow told us the story of the birth and the early childhood and younger years of Reverend Graham. And to be completely honest, it was really from here on that Vivian and Pierce's interest in the museum continued to decline. Regardless of their beliefs, people wonder how God used an ordinary man to inspire millions to respond to the message of the gospel. In the first room of the tour, Mr. Graham appears as a hologram to greet you himself and tell you a little bit about life from his perspective. Welcome so many friends here over the years. And you know, they all have one thing in common. At some point in life, they were all looking for peace. It's the greatest need of our hearts. Did you notice when you walked in today, you came in through the foot of the cross because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross 2000 years ago, we can have peace with God and spend eternity with him. From there, you learn a little bit more about his youth and then his personal conversion and ultimately his call to ministry. The next notable room to me was a room that sort of replicated the experience of the Los Angeles Crusade. This particular exhibit highlights the Crusades of Billy Graham and how those Crusades started there in Los Angeles and continued to grow throughout his ministry. The next exhibit was dedicated to the life and ministry of Ruth Graham. It was particularly uplifting to learn about the love and relationship that was shared between these two partners in ministry. This is the Hour of Decision with Billy Graham. The next several exhibits highlighted the usage of media in Billy Graham's ministry. There was a special emphasis placed on all of the different means by which Mr. Graham attempted to get out the message of the gospel, harnessing every available tool that he could to get the message of the gospel as far as he could. Because all the way God was teaching Israel, all through the Old Testament, that there was one God, only one. God of love and mercy and compassion in the midst of suffering. Difficult as it may be for us to see right now, this event can give a message of hope. Hope for the present and hope for the future. This event reminds us of the brevity and the uncertainty of life. The next segment of the museum emphasized the fact that because of the largeness of the Crusades and the vast reach of Billy Graham's media ministries, that he was afforded the great opportunity to be a counselor, advisor, and spiritual mentor to so many prominent members of society and celebrities. 
What I particularly appreciated about this section of the library is that it emphasized the fact that even when Billy Graham was placed in difficult circumstances or situations in every interview, he unwaveringly stood for the message that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. And while I realized that Mr. Graham was not without his controversies, both within the secular arena and also within religious arenas, I particularly appreciate that his message was incredibly clear throughout his life, and also that that message of salvation was very clear in the Billy Graham Library. The next exhibit emphasized how that the Billy Graham evangelistic ministries endeavor to get the gospel out to every person in every language all around the world. But possibly my favorite thing in the entire library was that the final exhibit on this journey of faith was a video of Mr. Graham himself giving a gospel evangelistic invitation at one of his crusades. After having had the opportunity of walking through all the other aspects of Mr. Graham's life and his message through this journey of faith, this presentation was incredibly moving and stirring. And of course, the song, Just As I Am, began to play. After this, guests are invited to exit the theater through a giant cross to find themselves at a beautifully painted mural of the empty tomb. Everything about the music and the lighting emphasizes the message which you've just heard. I have to confess that at this point, I uh, was entirely in tears because of what the message means to me. And it was a little embarrassing though, because I was there in the theater all by myself with this one other lady who was kind of a volunteer host or greeter at the library. And here I am just crying in the middle of the room with this stranger. But it seemed as though they were used to it, and there are a few personal workers who are available afterwards to counsel with anyone who is uncertain of their future and their eternity. And I have to say that I greatly appreciate the kindness of all of the volunteers and staff who work both paid and unpaid at the Billy Graham Library. These had to be some of the kindest, friendliest greeters that I've ever encountered at any of our museum experiences. And of course, while I was having this incredibly moving spiritual experience, Elena had to take the children outside and she was playing with them nearby. At that point, it was lunchtime, so we sat down and grabbed a bite to eat in the cafe. All right, now we're going to grab some lunch at the dairy bar. I got the hot dog and some chips, and I saw a cookie, and I'm going to try it out. These are my favorite chips. And to be completely frank, the food did leave a little bit to be desired. But that's not exactly what we were there for anyway. After this, we took a short walk across the front lawn over to Billy Graham's childhood home. Some hosts greeted us and told us of a few minor points of interest. Mr. Graham built this home, okay? And he was nine years old. I bet you. You look like a And finally, we ventured off to the gravesides of Billy Graham and Ruth Graham. One small detail we really appreciated at the gravesides is that because Ruth Graham was actually born in China, there's a Chinese character that is on her tombstone. It's the same Chinese character that is on her father's tombstone. It's the Chinese character for righteousness. And the Chinese character for righteousness tells an interesting story. There are actually two characters that are written out within this word righteousness. It is the word lamb and the character for me. And the lamb is over me. And what it means to be justified as a Christian is that God no longer sees you, but he sees the sacrifice that the lamb made to cover for you. Because as Christians, we realize that we are lost and we come short of the glory of God and we are sinful and that we must have the righteousness of Christ to atone for us in order for us to be saved. After that, we visited the gravesite of George Beverly Shea, who was the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association's famous music leader and Billy Graham's soloist. 
If you'd like to know a little bit more about what it means to know that you have eternal life, I'll place a link in the description below to the Discover Jesus page on the Aiken Adventures website.